On Capitol Hill, congressional leaders from both parties have reached a short-term spending deal to keep the government open until March. The deal comes just in time. Some parts of the government were set to run out of money this upcoming Friday. NBC News congressional correspondent Julie Serkin joins us now with more on this. So, Julie, what are we learning about the deal? Yeah, hey, Joe, good morning. Well, this is going to be structured effectively the same as that last stopgap government funding measure that took us into these two deadlines, the first of which you point out coming this Friday. So basically that moves that deadline, January 19th, uh, to March 1st, and then it moves the second deadline that would have been hit February 2nd down to March 8th. That's keeping that structure intact because some of those hardline conservatives in the House took Johnson at his word that he would not pass another short-term spending bill. They are nervous that the Senate, led by Democrats, could jam them with a big omnibus spending package. They want to make sure that House conservatives know they're still going to pass these items in two different buckets. So this is good news, averting that deadline potentially coming up at the end of the week, but they still have to get an agreement to pass it in the Senate and the House, and that inclement weather will certainly make that tricky with lawmakers set to return tomorrow night, Joe. Yeah, so Speaker Johnson held a call last night with House Republicans to discuss the negotiations. Do we at this point have any indication on whether he'll have the votes needed from his own party to get this passed before Friday's deadline? Joe, there were certainly a lot of voices, a lot of opinions raised on this call last night. Sources told me that Johnson did take a lot of incoming from Republicans who, again, are frustrated that he is continuing to go in this direction. He is following uh, what his predecessor, Kevin McCarthy, had done uh, in trying to keep the government open. Uh, and certainly, this is going to be something to watch for Johnson. He's going to have to reach across the aisle. Unfortunately, the map just does not cut it for him. He has a very, very tight margin, even more so with one lawmaker, for example, getting into a car accident this weekend. Now he's going to be out. Johnson announced that at the call yesterday. He's going to need Democrats to pass this along. It's going to be passed under what's called a suspension of rules. That means it's going to go straight to the floor, requiring two-thirds of the House. That means a lot of Democratic votes to get it across the finish line. Good news for them, though. Hakeem Jeffries, leader of Democrats in the House, had released a statement yesterday encouraging his members to vote in favor of this, to avert that government shutdown on Friday. But certainly that's just going to mean more heat on Johnson from conservatives. You mentioned the previous speaker, Kevin McCarthy. He faced similar inter-party clashes on government spending, and that is what ultimately cost him the gavel. So here's the question. Could we see a repeat? What are the challenges Johnson's facing right now? Remember, this stopgap funding bill just gives them more time to process the full year spending agreements, keeping those in those two buckets that I talked about. But that just means that he's also going to need Democrats to vote uh, to pass that top line spending bill, $1.6 trillion. They're going to divide them up. They're going to pass them in a series of bills. But we already heard from a lot of conservatives last week saying they're going to vote against it. They want Johnson, for example, to pair it with H.R. 2, with border security. He said, no way, that's not happening. Keep that link with Ukraine instead, but he's going to have to rely across the aisle. And like you mentioned, Kevin McCarthy had to do that, and it cost him his job. So far, though, Joe, people are willing to give him a chance. I spoke to a handful of conservatives on Friday, for example. While they are criticizing Johnson, they say they're not willing to go as far as to threaten his job just yet. We'll see what happens as the months continue. But we also ended Friday with Johnson saying he's going to keep that top line agreement intact. He's not going to go away from it, and certainly that's going to anger conservative. All right. Julie Serkin. Julie, thank you so much. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.